Jamal Nyas here with Ben Davison after an incredible press conference. It's going to be an amazing fight, Lara Wood too. And you were a pivotal talking point from the last fight. Obviously with the towel throwing, a lot of people shared their opinion on that. If for any reason a similar occasion arises in, a, in this fight, you know, anything can happen in a fight, would you do the same thing? And is that a discussion that you and Lee have had in the build-up to this one? It's not a discussion that we've had. You can only take each scenario as it comes. Each situation is individual. And, um, you know, you, you, you act in the moment. That's all you can do. Obviously, the focus isn't on the fight going that way. We're focused on, on uh, Lee putting in a great performance and avoiding any situations like that. When you were doing your job as a coach, you were protecting your fighter. Did it dishearten you to see the reaction from some fans? You know, you got a lot of support from some fans, but obviously in sport you're, you're going to get people saying things like that, saying things that you don't necessarily want to hear. You're going to get the critics, aren't you? Yeah, to be honest, I probably got more positive feedback from stopping a fight. Being honest, I don't, there's a lot of this got criticised for it. I didn't really. I probably got more praise for stopping a fight than I ever have done for any win that, that we've ever had. So... Uh, or for going six and a half years without taking a loss to the gym. So, um, yeah, madness really, but that's boxing. There were a lot of positives to take away from the first fight. You know, Lee boxed really well. Obviously, he did get caught, but in terms of the positives and then the weaknesses that you saw from Lara's side, without giving away too much from your game plan, what were the biggest weaknesses that you saw from Lara last time out? Yeah, we're not going to go into that, obviously, but the fact that we've got the two guys in against each other and the footage of that to go back over, um, discuss with Lee, show Lee, point out scenarios, this is when we were talking about that, that's what we meant when we said this. And for him to go, OK, I understand a little bit of a clearer picture now, he's actually got it to look back on, I think it's a huge advantage to us, in a, especially in, in our approach. I was saying to Lee as well, Josh Warrington and you can argue, argue the Conlon Lopez fight as well, Josh Warrington's kind of looming over this fight with his rivalry with Lara. That's not going to get finished until those two guys have a third fight. You know, Lara spat at Josh after that and he said a lot of savage things about Josh uh, this week as well. They just have pure hatred for each other. What do you make of that as sort of a side story heading into this as well? I don't know, I'm not really interested in it. I think that uh, it's got a bit personal between them, but that's to do with them, and uh, we're just focused on Mauricio Lara for Saturday night. Conlon Lopez as well, who do you think takes that? And, you know, it's a win-win, they're both big fights. If, if Lee wins, you know, Lee versus Conlon too, repeat of one of the greatest fights we've seen in the last decade. And Lopez, you know, fresh matchup for, for Lee and yourself as well. Yeah, a, a win for, for Lee and for Mick sets up a huge unification clash especially taking into consideration their uh, the mad fight they had last time as well so uh, yeah you know if it all plays out that, that that's great but uh, as I said we're just solely focused on Saturday night and Maurizio Lara what did you make of uh, Haney versus Lomachenko as well? It was an incredible high-level matchup. I mean, you know, boxing fans are just geeking out about high level, how high-level that matchup was. Um, rematch, you know, rematch could be on the table, but there's also Shakur Stevenson as well for Devin Haney as well. You know, plenty of big fights for Lomachenko as well. What do you make of it, and what do you see happening next? Yeah, I mean, Devin spoke about moving up since ever since I've known him, and uh, I think that he's talking about testing the waters at 140. Makes sense. He's, he's been holding that weight for a long time now and I've been there when he's doing the cuts you know he pushes himself to, to make that weight so he'll test the water at 140 I think next not to to put words in his mouth or make decisions for him but I think that that might be his next move and um, I think it's a smart move there's always going to be what about this guy what about that guy oh you're doing this because you're avoiding him there's always going to be that in boxing but uh, yeah obviously the Haney Lomachenko fight was a great fight amazing fight I haven't sat down and scored it when I watched it live I thought that the winner of that last round was probably going to edge it and I felt like Devin won that last round so that was my perspective on the fight. Billy Joe as well you know there's strong rumours circulating that he could be making a return could it be this year realistically and do you actually think he's going to make a return to the sport of boxing having been around him? I don't know again I can't make decisions for him I think that he's keen to box again I think that he isn't in a position where he has to come back but he wants to come back, so he's working on his time. And uh, when he's ready, if he's ready, then we'll see that. From what you've seen, how has he been since the Canelo fight? It was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, positive. I think that uh, obviously he's, he's older, wiser, more mature. A lot of experience he would have gained from that. 
<laughs> and a bit of time away from the sport and I think he's missing it, in love with the sport and uh, wants to be back. Speaking hypothetically of course, what are some of the matchups that you'd like to see personally just as a fan and a friend of him as well? I don't know, again I don't get involved in his business, That's he, he looks after his own career, makes his own decisions and uh, if we end up working with him and training him for his comeback then uh, you know, that's the role that we'll play but in terms of matchups and, and the path that he takes in his comeback that will be down to him. I'm going to ask you a similar question, I'm expecting a similar answer, but uh, just in terms of Saturday, you know, we mentioned the possible opponents for Lee if he wins. The Warrington fight in a stadium would be huge in this country, wouldn't it? And then, you know, like we said, Conlon could go over to Northern Ireland and do that one, another stadium fight. Just preferably for yourself, um, what would you like to see next? I don't know, we'd have to sit down and, and discuss... Uh, how that looks and, and how each option looks and uh, go from there but at the moment the, the, the picture and the, the focus is obviously on Maurizio Lara. Having too many options is never a bad thing is it? Sure, exactly. All the best on Saturday night and thank you for your time.